Emma Mijas died a horrible and painful death unnecessarily on her very first Christmas Eve 2004 at the hands of 25 doctors and nurses, another victim of medical malpractice. All 25 doctors and nurses systematically administered the wrong drugs for her life-threatening condition called SLOS. SLOS, smith Limley optis syndrome, is a congenital abnormality which requires treatment strategies on supplying supplemental cholesterol. They gave Emma the wrong drug, Questran, not once, but 92 times, yes, 92 times in one month, a cholesterol-reducing drug, not the cholesterol supplemental drug she needed. All of them knew better, they were trained to know better. They were some of the world's leading authorities at the Louisiana State University Health Science Center in New Orleans. But they just didn't give a damn about Emma's life. Every day, somewhere in America, more than 300 innocent men, women, and children become victims of medical malpractice at the hands of incompetent and negligent doctors, maybe just like your own family doctor. And they end up either dead or permanently injured. Last year, over 98,000 victims were killed by doctors. Emma's doctors had the unmitigated gall to blame Emma's death on the new resident doctors rather than take responsibility themselves. Emma remained hospitalized at various hospitals from the date she was born to the day she died because of the outrageous medical malpractice perpetrated on her by these 25 so-called healthcare professionals none of whom cared enough to give her the potentially life-saving medical treatment she desperately needed. Today, for the very first time ever on TV, the Insider Exclusive will tell Emma's true story as we visit with her parents, Jason and Adrian Mahias, and their lawyer, John Hammonds, partner at Nelson & Hammonds, who for 30 years has been standing up for people just like Emma, a little innocent baby who never had the chance to stand up for herself. Hi, I'm Steve Murphy, and this is the Insider Exclusive, live from Shreveport, Louisiana, at the law firm of Nelson and Hammonds. It's my great pleasure to introduce John Hammonds. Welcome Good to, to be the here. show. Thank you. This is a, a very unfortunate case of a newborn that was actually, it, 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 when I read it, it, I was amazed. Sometimes 92 times a month, the doctors were giving her the wrong drugs. That's correct. They were reading the paper, giving her the wrong drugs. Tell us about this case. This case is, in my estimation, the most outrageous case of medical malpractice that I've handled in my 30 years of doing this. And the victim was Emma Emma Mahis. Mahis. Emma Mahis, that's correct. Uh, Emma was born in Lafayette, Louisiana, and she had a genetic abnormality that was caught It was in, uh, by her treating physicians there. It's SLOS type 1, which is a bunch of big names, but what it means is that her liver did not properly produce the good cholesterol in a very simplistic way that we all have to have mm -hmm. for our metabolic systems to work. And the way that uh, condition is treated is to give supplemental cholesterol. In other words, the opposite of what's usually done for us older folks. Which is a drug called Questran, right? Well, Questran is a drug that reduces... The opposite. It does the opposite. And it is like, it's the oldest um, uh, anti-cholesterol drug. Mm -hmm. uh, now we have things like Crestor and Lipitor and those type of things. Right. And what happened in this case was that uh, uh, sh the diagnosis was made through blood test at Johns Hopkins at the Kennedy Krieger Institution, Institute at Johns Hopkins, uh, confirming the diagnosis and uh, giving the diagnostic protocols, which were to administer supplemental cholesterol four times daily based on birth weight and so forth. The opposite of Questran. The opposite of Questran. Yeah. Uh, she was transferred from Lafayette to what was then considered the leading children's facility in the state, Children's Hospital of New Orleans, where her care was managed by 
uh, the physicians at LSU Medical Center. They do their, they are the ones who handle the pediatric and neonatal care at Children's Hospital. And, and these are world-renowned doctors, right? They are. They are our teaching physicians, the head of the primary teaching facility at, in the state, at least at that time, because that was, this happened pre-Katrina. Right. And uh, the tragedy that happened was that when she was transferred, her condition was confirmed by those physicians, and a proper order was given for cholesterol. However, there was a major error in that the pharmacist uh, filled the drug or filled the order not with cholesterol but with a drug called cholestrimine or Questran is the brand name, right. which is precisely the opposite of what she should be getting and made her condition much worse. This drug, though, was labeled properly, wasn't it? Properly labeled. So it arrived at the hospital. It was properly labeled. What went wrong? People didn't know what the drug was, is all I can explain, or they didn't read. Uh, the tragedy was that for seven days, uh, Questran was administered negligently by the nursing staff because the pharmacist negligently misfilled the order. Mm -hmm. Uh, the eighth day is when the outrageous mal the malpractice became outrageously worse because from the eighth day f until the 89th day, so 81 consecutive days, um, her treating physicians, including the staff neonatologists, issued orders that she receive cholesterol. In other words, they wrote yeah. in the progress note that she was to receive cholesterol, but then in their order, they would give an order for Questran. So the same doctor in a progress note properly yeah. ordered or said she should receive cholesterol, but then he ordered something that was contraindicated. And he should know better because he went to medical school oh. and he knows what the drug is. And Absolutely. The and the pharmacist should know better because they know what the drug does, right? And the nurses should have known better because yeah. it's on the order sheet. So what we had for 81 days was approximately 15 separate physicians. It's 15 to 18. I don't remember the exact number. I read it was 25. And it may have been as high as 25. Mm -hmm. but let us say, but at least 20 physicians made the same mistake repeatedly. And mm -hmm. essentially this mistake was made four times a day where this child uh, who had inadequate cholesterol because her liver wasn't working properly now ends up having even that cholesterol diminished by virtue of the wrong medications being given mm -hmm. and she presented classic signs indicating that her problems were progressively worsening and yet for 89 days it was not detected. I want to point out that this SLOS type 1 mm -hmm. was a treatable it situation where had she been treated properly, she'd be living today. That's correct. What the, eventually happened to her? Well, eventually, uh, the consultant who was assisting with this was um, a physician at Johns Hopkins. Uh, he checked in on her and eventually it was determined, or he learned, that uh, she had been mistakenly given the wrong medication for 89 days and had her transferred to Johns Hopkins. Uh, she underwent extensive medical care and treatment there, but by that point in time, so much damage had been done by not only failing to give her the correct medicine, but also giving her an incorrect medicine. So she was getting a double dose of malpractice that by that time her condition was irreversible and she ultimately died um, in having never left the neonatal intensive care units of the hospitals that she was in. She was in extreme pain. She was. She was a very sick child um, because of the failure of her liver to yeah. function properly and the resulting imbalances within her system. 
I read that uh, some of the doctor's excuses as why they didn't catch why the wrong drug was being given to her. One doctor's statement was, all I do is sign the form. The residents are supposed to determine whether it's right or not. Yes, that was one of the teaching staff members, one of the staff neonatologists who, were, who was in charge of the yeah. care. And I found that statement to be absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, it's almost like uh, I'm signing my name that it doesn't mean anything mm -hmm. because somebody else is supposed to be doing the check right. right? Exactly. Anytime a physician signs off on an order, it means that he should have reviewed the chart, yeah. he should understand the order being given, the benefits and the risk, and he should agree with that order. Mm -hmm. And for those physicians to, uh, to say that they just checked off or signed off without even looking at what they were signing sets a very da uh, dangerous precedent yeah. and it's certainly not what you want your young doctors to be taught no, no, to no, do. No, 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 no. And it, it's kind of like what's the, what's the purpose of being a supervisor? Absolutely. Supervisor supervises the work done by somebody who's not as experienced as you, right? That's the whole theory. Um, how did that case come to you? Uh, the case came to me actually from an, an attorney in Lafayette, the family. Uh, taught with an attorney in Lafayette who in turn consulted with me and we got the claim filed really almost at the last moment. Because you were uh, meeting those trap laws. All, right? the, all of the laws and, and the family didn't fully understand what all had happened yeah. and the significance because of the tragedy. I, I will tell you that um, the mother um, I do not, I believe that she literally stayed in the hospital with her child for the entire 15 months and yeah. never left. And so um, they came to me, I investigated the case and we then pursued uh, the claim, actually one claim against the hospital for the pharmacist's negligence yes. and a separate claim against LSU Medical Center for the multiple acts of substandard care by their physicians. What was the outcome? The outcome of the, was that we eventually settled the claim, mm -hmm. each of the claims separately and distinctly. So we settled the claim. Uh, Louisiana actually has two sets of laws, one that applies to private health care providers, the hospital, and the other one that applies to public health care providers, those physicians who are in teaching f right. uh, positions. What are the limits there? They're the same. In both cases, even though they are separate uh, acts, both acts, both of those acts uh, uh, give a cap on recovery or a limit on recovery of five hundred thousand dollars plus medical bills. You submitted this to the uh, medical uh, review board. That's correct. What was the uh, what was their evaluation? They never ruled. The well, case was. I thought you had to rule one way or another. Well, the case was actually settled yeah. before the panel rendered its opinion. The how case long, went, How long does it usually take? Well, it's supposed to take one year to go through the panel. One uh, year? To go through the panel. <laughs> As a practical matter, most panels are extended, so they may take two years. In this case, the defendants continued to ask and obtain court-ordered continuances, so the panel process was actually I believe three and a half or four years down. We hadn't even been able to file a lawsuit yet. Well, let, uh, me, let, me, let me back up a little bit. Yeah. You got some laws in the state of Louisiana that require you to file a lawsuit or make a claim within a certain period of time. That's correct. If the medical review board takes a zillion years mm -hmm. to rule on something, how does that affect your status in meeting those requirements? The, re the one year, we have a very limited time frame here, much more limited than other states. We must file a claim a claim within one year of the date of the discovery of the malpractice. To the review board? To the review board. Okay. Once we have done that, then we've met our I see. time frame. So then we have, uh, the, the premise is that it will take about a year to complete <laughs> the panel, yeah. but as a practical matter, oftentimes the panels take much longer. Yeah. And that's I'll, what happened in this case. Sure. Um, we are fortunate enough to have the parents, Emma's parents, Jason and Adrian, here with us today, and we're going to bring yes. them on right now. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Jason and Adrian Mahis. Welcome to the show. 
Jason. Welcome to the show, Adrian. Boy, oh boy, I, when I watch the video, and we're going to be showing it on screen now, of your daughter and what she went through. Where along the line in this, what was it, she was alive 15 months or so? Where along the line did you, did you realize that something was drastically wrong, that the doctors who claimed to be the world's finest doctors were doing the dumbest and stupidest things? We actually kind of stumbled upon um, the mistake that was made. Um, I, we were fed up with, I guess, the lack of attention we were getting while we were at the hospital. And so we started to make calls to outside doctors um, did you see the drug that they, you know, the labeled drug that they were administering? Do you see the Well, I name was, on it? because I was interested in everything and I was there every time they were giving medication to her. Oh, what are you giving now? What are you giving? Just to know, you know. Um, and I remember thinking that the drug they were giving her, it was supposed to be cholesterol. And I remember thinking how it made sense because it was yellow. I thought of egg yolks and, yeah, yeah. you know, cholesterol. Um, so, I had no no reason to question that they weren't giving her that. Um, and then, like I said, they, I guess the name was dropped. Well, it's cholesterol, but it's called cholestyramine. Um, and I just thought, you know what? I, I thought it was strange that cholesterol would have a more technical name. You know, I thought cholesterol would just be cholesterol. Um, and so when I dropped that, the cholestyramine, um, to another doctor over the phone, he said, whoa, hold on a minute, that's not cholesterol. And that's when I realized, well, okay, that's what she's supposed to be getting. What is this doing to her? Yeah. And, and he's the one who said, no, she's not supposed to be getting that. Yeah. And so we immediately um, took steps to take her out of, the out of that hospital to move her to another one. Yeah, who was the doctor that you called, not by name, but was just a friend? Um, he was actually a specialist at another hospital. Right. Um, we had first made a call back to a, the doctor at the hospital she was born. Um, he had performed a surgery on her, and I was just questioning, you know, these doctors are telling me this. What do you think? Um, and we had originally started trying to find another answer because they, uh, she was bleeding from her stomach and they had told us that she's just in liver failure at this point. So they put us in a small room and kind of set us to the side. Well, my wife, she couldn't accept that answer. So she started calling all these other doctors and they were... So they didn't even know they were giving her the wrong drug, did no. they? They didn't realize it. They just no. saw the results of it yeah. and then they wanted to prepare you for and you the, know, whatever's going to happen. And the bad thing about it, the blood that was coming out of her, uh, she had a G-tube. The blood that was coming out had n wasn't even from her liver, from nothing. It was just because they had it in too deep, and it was scratching the inside of her stomach, and it was, it was making it her bleed. Stomach wall. And nobody cared to even look at that. They just seen a sick child, and they were like, "Okay, let's let's just put her off to the side." Yeah. What hospital was this at? Children's Hospital. Yeah. And they were supervised by the Louisiana State University doctors, is that it? I'm not sure if all of them were. But there were a lot of doctors. I believe, yeah, involved. yeah. They, I think that was... I, I read yeah. something like 25 doctors and nurses overlooked this whole thing. And I know we were, we were young, um, and I don't think it was being naive, but I had in my mind, you know, we're going to this great hospital, especially, you know, we're from small towns. So I, I imagined all these doctors sitting around you know, at this big table discussing what they were going to do to help her and we're going to do this and, we, you know, have this big plan. Um, and I really thought that's what we were going to. You know, th this hospital's the best in Louisiana. These doctors care about children. That's all they, they treat. Mm -hmm. um, and when we got over there, it was just, it was so heartbreaking, um, the lack of attention we got. The original doctor that we went there to see, we didn't see him until the last day we were there. And that was the only reason why we seen him was because we told him that we're leaving. We're going to a rival hospital across town. And he came in and was trying to give us all these options. Well, we could do this. We could do that. And it was kind of like, and he was the head GI doctor yeah. at the hospital. And it was like, 
too late. But nobody had realized, despite the fact that it was in the record, that she had been, was given the, being given the wrong medicine, right? Nobody realized it? If they did, they certainly weren't going to say anything, you know. And it was, it was so frustrating because I was there every day. He, he was working, so he couldn't be there. And I was constantly thinking, you know, these doctors are going to come and talk to me about her. And, you know, what's the next step? But it was almost like we were always, and I don't think I'm being dramatic, we were always in a corner. Yeah. You know, like, oh, that baby's got so many problems, we just can't. You know, there's nothing we can do. And I never felt they even tapped into a portion of the intelligence they had. Mm. Because I know these doctors were smart enough that they could have figured something out. Yeah. Um, and, and I just never felt that they did. That was, your, that was your first child, correct? Yes. And you now have a new baby, eight months old. Congratulations. Um, Emma eventually was transferred to John Hopkins University. Medical school in Baltimore. In Baltimore, and you guys moved there too. Didn't yes, you? we did. How long were you there? We were there six months. Uh huh. And at that point in time, the damage had been pretty much done. The right? damage had been done, and I was in constant um, contact with this doctor. Yeah. Um, he wasn't from Hopkins. He was in a little. Um, he's. It was uh, uh, like a. I guess they were kind of uh, the same hospitals: Kennedy Krieger and John Hopkins. Yeah. Uh, he was from Kennedy Krieger, but he had rights to John Hopkins. But he knew everything. Well, I say everything. I put him on a, a really high pedestal. Um, he knew so much about the syndrome. And I was on the phone with him. He took the time out. He had never met me, but he had treated other children that had the same syndrome in our area. Yeah. Um, and and he, was, he would tell me, you know, this should be done. This should be done. And so it was finally why don't we just go there? This is someone who cares. And that's exactly what we did. It's fair to say that had she been given the proper drug and the proper treatment, she'd be with us today, right? You know, only God knows. Only God knows that. But, and, and it's hard to imagine. That's, that's the rough part is not knowing. You know, I'd love for my child to be given the best opportunity uh, you know, to live. And I, I, I can honestly sit here and say, I don't think she was. You know, I know she wasn't. She wasn't given every, every chance that any other child was. And what's even more disturbing about everything is that the reason I don't think she was treated the way she should is because these doctors were constant. they'd sit us down and, you know, um, you realize, you know, um, the quality of life and how productive in society will she be? You know, her her um, IQ isn't what it should be. And that was really disturbing. They were looking for a way for you to say, okay, end her life. Oh, they wanted us to. Several yeah. times they asked us yeah. to unplug machines, just hold her. And mm -hmm. that, was, that was just sick to me. I mm -hmm. couldn't do it. Because as long as she was fighting, we were... We had to do our part and fight for her. We're yeah. her parents. I want to thank both of you for coming here today. Thank you very much. Best of luck to your new child thank and you. your new thank career. You. Thank, thank you, you so much. You're welcome. What a remarkable couple in their horrendous story. I'm glad you were able to help them out. True to our incredible story and incredible faith that they've had to be able to deal with all the tragedy in their lives and to come out on top of things as they have. There are, and we've talked about this before, but there's some very important issues that a lot of people who may have suffered at the hands, been victimized by doctors or nurses, that have, they have to be aware when filing their claims because there's a lot of traps in the Louisiana medical malpractice law. What are some of the more prominent ones? Well, the main trap, the one that gets far more people than you can imagine is that Louisiana has the shortest time frame for filing a claim of any state. Um, and our time frame is one year. We from the to, date of discovery of the, the malpractice. That's correct. And what is, how is that date determined? It's a subjective evaluation based upon a reasonable man standard. Yeah. In other words, should a patient or a patient's family realize that 
the damage suffered by the patient may have been caused by substandard care. Yeah. Now obviously if somebody goes in for one surgery and comes out with a different surgery, you know, yeah. legs amputated or something, yeah. then it's going to start from that day because you ought to know it immediately. But on the other hand, if some if a doctor or a nurse leaves an instrument in somebody, yeah. then until that discovery takes place, uh, the one year is interrupted. However, remember that in Louisiana, at the outset, we must file a claim within three years of the act of malpractice, regardless of whether it was known by the patient or even knowable. So we could have a situation where an instrument left in could not be knowable, but it's not symptomatic until three and a half years and tough. Yeah. Not a thing you can do about it. We all want to see the laws in the state of Louisiana change to benefit more of the victims rather than the pocketbooks of the insurance companies and the doctors. So what myth, what uh, issue do you think should be changed publicly so people understand how that can happen? Well, the main myth that is perpetrated by the Chamber of Commerce and by other groups seeking to create even more stringent laws in this area has to do with the issue of what of whether medical malpractice litigation rises or causes the cost of medical care to go up. It really doesn't and most of the studies that have been done, virtually all of the objective studies demonstrate that the entire cost of the medical malpractice system, everything, judgments, insurance, uh, premiums, defense cost, legal interest, everything, really only has about a 1% impact upon the delivery of health care. So the real issue that we face in this area is, should a person who is injured by substandard medical care be entitled to the same standard or level of compensation that someone injured in a car wreck mm -hmm. is entitled to? Right. And I believe that just because the damage is caused in, the, in a hospital or caused by a health care provider should not limit or restrict the injured person from receiving a just and fair compensation for yeah. what, what's happened to him. Well, John, if we can change that, then th these shows will do that. And thank I want to you. thank you very much for being thank on you. the program. I appreciate everything. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us. You can get more information about our guest and the issues at insiderexclusive.tv. Thank you.